And let me get the uh, slideshow. Okay, hold on a sec. It's hard to do three things at once. There we go. So from beginning, let's go. Okay, doing floor the ninja way. So I wanted to show you some things to, the first thing I want you to impart to you uh, is that this that I'm teaching about today could have to do with your floor ship, but it also has to do with anytime you get an inquiry about a listing. So it could be that just somebody's calling you about a listing that you have, um, or it could be sitting on floor. It could be kind of like open house type stuff, but anything that when somebody is calling you uh, on the phone, mostly less in person and more on phone. So I wanna teach about on phone and then I'll go a little bit to what happens when somebody walks in the door on floor and what you should, um, what you should do there. So the first thing to do when you are uh, when you're on floor is to make sure you have a good mindset. So your mindset when you're coming into floor shift, uh, I know that sometimes you have a really, really busy day and you're thinking, oh God, this is the last thing I really need to do right now. I, I am going away on vacation in a couple of days and I, I have this new listing and then I have to get back to this fire. So you just have to let all of that go and get into the right mindset. And the, the mindset that you need is not that I want the phone to just ring off the hook the whole time. This is what you have to think is one call. I just need one call. The phone has to ring one time and that's all I need, right? So get yourself into that calm mindset. And, this, and the next one that I want you to think of is that you are here to serve your sellers. And not just meaning like your sellers, but everybody's sellers at Coldwell Banker. You are there to be the face of Coldwell Banker for that three and a half hours, four hours. Uh, and then anybody coming in, you are there to help them. And that's kind of how I am all day is like, I'm just trying to be helpful um, to other people. And if somebody walks in that needs help, like that's kind of my job is to go, you know, whether they're trying to sell me something or it's a client or whatever, but you got to get in yourself into that helpful focus uh, focus mindset and just let everything else go, even if you're having a really uh, stressful day. And then the third one is, I am ready. I'm ready. This is time. So what does ready mean? Oh, before I say that, you want to look the part. So you always want to get dressed up. And I know that that's why I always struggle with, like we used to have, uh, there was a, a couple of ladies here that would wear $300, $400 jeans and they'd say but you know that's the look it's like designer jeans and they're ripped and all this kind of stuff but not on floor just it's not our if you were up in uh what would i say even telluride there is a different look to telluride than there is in durango we happen to still get a lot of old money that comes in the door like texas old money so we're a little bit different than some of the other resort markets and you just want to make sure that you look the part and you're dressed professionally so make sure you're here uh, at the right time. And when I, what, the best thing to do is arrive five minutes early with your computer all ready to go and you plug it in, you get it all ready on Paragon so that you are ready to go at your scheduled time. The other floor person has been there for three and a half hours. They're ready to get going. So be ready to jump on a couple uh, seconds early, couple minutes early, get your computer, get Paragon up and get just into that like, okay, I'm ready. So. Ready is, your smile is on, you're smiling, you're ready for the phone to ring and people can sense that. You know when you're picking up the phone, if you've ever had a customer service job, if you are calling somebody and they're smiling, you can tell when they talk to you. Uh, and that's the kind of mindset you wanna be on. Second one, you wanna have your computer on, just like I said, you wanna have Paragon on, you wanna be at your desk, you wanna have your head in the game. So that's all uh, what you need to do. And then also you want to make sure that the receptionist knows that you're okay, Corey, I'm good to go. Let's do this. Okay. So you need to set your intention. So you get on floor and then this is super ninja is you always focus on what's good in life, right? So it's just like the ninja mindset when you wake up in the morning, it's like, I've got to think about the things that I'm grateful for. I'm going to write some daily affirmations. I'm going to write some thank you cards and, and maybe read something super positive or listen to some good music or a positive mindset type thing, because whatever you do first thing in the morning is sort of the way your day ends up rolling. You ever have those days where everything just keeps spiraling worse and worse, your mindset gets into a bad place and then it just makes itself get worse and worse. But the same thing about floor is if you have a positive mindset, 
then you can keep having good stuff happen to you. I do find it's very true. There is a thing called luck, but the better you do, the luckier you get. So I noticed that Hosea, for instance, would just get so many good floor leads. And I know it was, he was just taking the floor that he ended up getting. It wasn't that he was picking certain days or certain times. He just happened to get a lot of business from floor. And I know he has a great attitude. He did a good job up on floor. And there would be other people that have been here for a long, long time. And they say, I just get nothing on floor. And I was like, you know, I, I think that some of that is about your mindset. And when the phone rings, it's the way you handle the call. There's something to do with people are either good on floor or they just don't have that right mindset. But here's the intention I want you to have. Okay. I receive phone calls, phone inquiries from ready, willing, and qualified buyers and sellers on this shift. Okay. They're going to be good leads. I'm not going to get any wasted calls. I'm going to make the most of my time. Okay. So that's very important. And then this is an interesting tip. And I found it over the, the, the course of my 20 years or so in real estate, or I, I haven't been selling in a long time, but it's, it's so true that when people are calling to inquire on the home, they're not going to buy that home. That is not the reason they're calling. What they're trying to do is actually eliminate the home that they drove by from their search. So they're looking for a certain thing. And then they drove by this home and they go, well, it's probably not the one I'm looking for, but let me just call on it and make sure it's not the one I want, right? So isn't that weird? Like they're eliminating it. So here's, here's the deal from Ninja. They're saying buyers call on a property 35% more uh, expensive than they can afford 95% of the time. Maybe it's something that's really, really beautiful. And if it, let's just see, maybe maybe there's some crazy reason that it's real cheap. It, it's kind of over here. Maybe, maybe I can actually afford it. So don't get yourself into the, oh my gosh, they're going to buy this home. They're probably just curious about that house. So make sure you know that. And then on floor, the one thing that I always ask people when, when you're a brand new agent, I never let you just go on floor. So I always said, and Crystal, you definitely know this. Heather, you know this. You have to know Paragon like the back of your hand before you can go on floor. And here's my test for you. So here's the skill set is you need to be able to search the MLS, ask questions, listen to the answers all at the same time. When you're a new agent, you're like, oh my God, I can't even look through the MLS. So here's my test because this happened to me so frequently. Someone is driving by a property out on the Mesa and they say, I'm a uh, of spotty reception. And they're like, hi, I just drove by a house and I wanted to know how much it is. Like, awesome. Where are you? I don't know. I'm not from here. Okay. Where do you think you are? Is it a blue and white sign? Yes. Okay. You know, it's Cobalt Banker. So that's something I'd always ask. What color is the sign? And they go, it's, it's next to a house. I go, okay. So um, wh where are you in the county? Well, I just drove by the hospital. Cool. Okay. So we know it's the Mesa. Now, did you turn off the highway? Yes, I made a right. Are you on a dirt road? Yes. Okay, so that kind of narrows it down. So then I'm doing a map search of that entire area. You always want to make sure you're doing multi-class, not residential, because they say it's a house. It could easily be a lot that they that the sign is next to. So I'm like so frustrated. I'm trying to find this while I'm on the phone and asking questions at the same time, right? So then you find out, oh, it is a lot. They thought it was a house or whatever, right? What color is the house? You're asking all these questions, but doing a map search and being able to like narrow it down while they're on the phone, it's really important not to put someone on hold it, it, because the, the reason you're doing that is they're not going to buy this house anyway. So you don't want to be just like answering their questions. They're just calling because they want to know how many bedrooms it is. They just want to know how much the price is, right? But if you waste that 30 to 90 seconds where you're looking for that house and you don't ask them any questions, you have lost the ability to actually connect to them. So not only do you need to know the skill set, you need to, here it is, the critical time. It's that 30 to 90 seconds window to create rapport and connection when you greet the caller to the time the caller expects you to find the MLS listing. So if you're if they call in and say, hey, I'm just looking for a listing, you're like, hi, I'm, I'd love to help you with that. Let me, let me find out more about uh, what you're looking for. And you say, by the way, my name's Heather. What's your name? So you never spit out your name right away. You wait. You're, you're talking to them. You go, by the way, my name's Heather. What's your name? Then it, it works better that they give you their name. Okay. So you have to engage the customer after, during that 30 to 90 seconds to be able to find 
their pain and pleasure. Pain and pleasure, that's where you're finding what they're looking for. And what the scholar is subconsciously trying to do is eliminate the properties to find their needle in the haystack that they want. So what you want to do is make sure you avoid the info dump. So the info dump is, it's three, I, I've done this. I've gotten one call on my floor shift and I've just got nervous because you could tell the person was standoffish. And then I just said, it's three bedrooms, two baths, and it has two car to garage and it's 350,000. And they're like, okay, thanks. And they hang up and you're like, oh, that was the one call. I just messed it up. So, but what happens is if you do the info dump, as soon as you give uh, the person a feature of the property they called on that does not fit their criteria, then you've lost them unless the rapport you've built is strong enough, okay? So the call is not about selling the house they call on. The purpose of the call is to create connection and discover their pain or pleasure so you can solve that problem and create value for them. A compound question is when you put two questions together. You want to kind of avoid that because what it does is it's going to um, hold on, I'm, I'm a little behind. It's going to confuse them. And then they just like, uh, it's too much information for them to process at once. And you're got, not going to get any further with that person. So the success of your call, and especially for someone like me that talks really fast, I'm highly caffeinated. I like to, you know, I'm always upbeat. I have a tendency to talk too fast. And so I need to slow down and ask one question at a time and try to actually connect with them. Because if I'm going to lose them in that first few minutes, then I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to connect with them. And then I've, I've kind of lost it. So let's see. The house is a medium to create a connection and a relationship. Floor is not about selling the house. So pr key principles on floor. First, it's the opening question. So I have an example now of a dialogue and I wanted to read it to you. And then I wanted to play you three different phone calls of um, what other people have done on floor to see what you think about that. So key principle on floor, first off is the, is the opening question. So here we go, here's a floor interview. I'm not gonna do it with someone because I, I wanna do it the way this is written. So mostly what people will say is, I saw that property, hello, um, I saw that property at 123 Main Street. I'd like a little more information about that property. So here's your opening question. Great, while I'm looking that up, would you mind if I asked you a few questions? No, that's fine. Tell me what attracted you to that property. And whatever their response is, and they know you're looking up this property, you have a certain amount of time where you can ask them questions while you look up the property where it's not weird in any way, right? And whatever they say, that's where your next question is going to be. It's not on a script. I got tons of scripted questions, but it's about what they answer to what you ask. Just like you're in a relationship, you're on a date, any of these things where Somebody tells you something interesting and you want to know more. It's the same thing on floor. So tell me what attracted you to that property. I like the way the property looked from the outside. It's in a great area. You must start probing more to understand what they mean by it looked great from the outside. What does great mean to them? And also it's in a great area. Resist the temptation to acknowledge that and just go on to your next question, right? The primary reason is that the first feature that they actually spit out and tell you is most certainly their dominant point of interest. So whatever they said first is usually the first thing that they're interested in. And you also have to be so um, cautious about putting yourself and what you like about homes or a certain home or a certain area into what they might like. I have learned this over the years so many times. There are so many different kinds and types of people out there. They all like different stuff. We all like different flavors of ice cream. Some of us like pizza. Some of us don't. So you can't, you don't want to go, oh, I like that too. Oh, I bet it's because of the beautiful sunrise. Oh, I hate the sun. You know, like you don't know, like don't say anything. You want to know what they think. So here we go. Could you tell me a little bit more about what you liked about the looks? Well, I like the landscaping and it looks like it's on a pretty good, a pretty big lot. Okay. So by this time, you probably found the house, right? <laughs> so be really careful not to announce to them. I was really bad at that. So I find the house on the MLS. I go, guess what? I found it. And then they want you to do the info dump. So try to not say that you found the house. Uh, 
But as soon as they know you found it, uh, they, they just expect you to spit out the information. So also they have just told you they like the landscaping and it's on a large lot. Instead of repeating what they just told you, which sometimes you learn in conversational uh, training is that you wanna repeat things to people. You don't wanna do that in a floor call. So they say landscaping and a large lot. So instead of saying, how about this? So landscaping and a large lot are important to you. Instead of saying that, do it this way. Tell me a little bit more about the landscaping. Doesn't that sound better? That's way more open-ended. Hey, let me get to the next part of the, of the dialogue. So also be careful not to do a compound question. So they told you two things, right? You're picking one to go for. If you said, tell me a little bit more about the landscaping and the large lot, they're just trying to get information. They're standing on the side of a road somewhere calling you. They're kind of annoyed possibly at this point, and they're not sure if they want to engage with you. So if you're confusing them, their brain is going to shut down a little bit more. So if you just stick to the landscaping, here's what happens. Well, the landscaping's mature, lots of trees, great flower beds, great. And when you told me a large lot, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, we live in a townhouse now and we don't want to be uh, close to our neighbors in our next house. Brilliant. Like now you have all this information. Got it. If you were to wave a magic wand, what else would be really important to you in your new home? Well, I think the most important thing would be a big kitchen, four bedrooms, a large backyard, and not too close to the neighbors. You just got everything from them, right? And you've only been talking for maybe 30 seconds. Great. Tell me what's prompting your move. I just got a promotion and we want to change school districts. So now keep going for that next questions. Congratulations. So here's another thing. You're so concentrating on the conversation that you missed that he just said he got a big promotion, right? So don't just keep going like a robot. Oh, I have another question to answer. He just told you he had a big promotion. So just relax and listen to what he's saying. So when you're doing this ninja, you're not pr just practicing a script. You're practicing conversational tactics so you are, you, your, your ears are like this, instead of focus down on what you want to read and get through, like, I must read this whole thing, you're actually paying attention to what the person's saying. And I find that is very different way of, of doing things. So they just told you they got a promotion. Congratulations. Where do you work? Tell me a little bit about your promotion. So yes, that's a compound question. There's two things at once, but it's acceptable because what they call it is accessing prior learning. Like I'm asking you, what was your grandmother's house like? It's not about something that's going on right now. It's it's kind of accessing the stuff that's back here. And uh, because it's about the promotion, it's that's what they call it is accessing prior, prior learning. So then what school district are you in? What school district would you prefer? So continue to ask them about their preferences in a home. And remember, as soon as you give them a feature of this house they called on that they don't like, they want to move on, they want to disconnect, so it's, uh, okay, you know that the house they called on might not work for, uh, this is one thing you can say to them. So the house that you called on might or might not work for you, but I am doing a search for some that might. How about if we meet and I will show you a process that will make sure you get the best house for you? Would that be helpful? So if yes, you set the appointment, you get their information, you can offer them, you have a buyer's packet of information, any of these things. So you're resisting the fact that, you know, I saw this house, I don't think this one's going to work for you. You're not saying, you know, this one's four bedrooms, three baths, click, you know, you're trying to just get more information about them and set up the appointment because it's no longer about the house. Yes, you're giving them the information they called on, but you're doing it in a way that you already told me that what you're looking for is not really going to work. So grand openings, while I am looking that up, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Who's going to say no to that? That's an easy yes for them to get on to the next question. Tell me what attracted you to that house. Stay with the answer. Don't go to bedrooms and baths. And here's some pitfalls. Oh, I did this because I got so annoyed that I'd be dragged around the county. And then I find out that they already have a realtor. But you have to be really careful when you're talking to someone. Yes, you want to have an appointment. Yes, you want to bring them in. Yes, you want to show them that you have a process for being a buyer. But you also do want to find out if they have another realtor. But if you ask it right away, it seems so turnoffish. Like, 
do you have a realtor you're working with already? So just be careful. That's such a negative um, to bring it up right away in a conversation. So if they say it, what's the best answer for that? Always have the smile on. Oh, that's so great. Well, let me send you this information. I'm happy to help. Great. Well, I wish you the best of luck, that sort of thing, if they already have somebody that they've, they've signed with. So it's okay to have another realtor and I still want to be helpful, but I'm not going to... Um, I, I don't want to ask that thing that right away. So let me stop sharing. Okay. Any questions on that part of it? Okay. I got, I also wanted to, I have, uh, should I go into the floor, people walking in or do you want to, let's stick with phone calls for now. Does that sound good? This is the fun part. Okay. So I'm going to now share three phone calls. So we had a ninja trainer here years ago. It must have been when I was up at PERG for those couple of years. So there was a person here and they were teaching floor uh, from Ninja. I think it was Peter. And he called our biggest competitor and he had the worst floor experience ever. And it was so perfect that it happened while he was in the training because he could show us what a bad floor call looks like. So are you ready for this? It's four minutes, but it's, it's priceless. Okay. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. Floor call. You get it on here, download. Oh, shoot. I, I had it set up last night and it didn't work. Hold on. If I do this, can you hear it? You can't hear that, can you? I'm going to share my screen then. Let's do it over. Because then I can share the video. So you might not be able to hear me for a while. Hold on. Share screen, share sound, here we go. Give me a thumbs up if you hear it. I'm gonna go ahead and record it. <laughs> They're getting the floor agent. <laughs> One minute and so it's 150 on a Wednesday in the middle of the summer. We are high season, aren't we? Boy, this is a testimonial to that. I saw a property at 250 Sunset Lane, and I'm wondering if you could give me some information about it. Yeah, definitely. Let me see if I can pull that up. This is the classic talking while they're searching. I can mute. All right, yeah, pulling it up right here. So see, one is sold, one is still active. Um, oh yeah, I do recognize that. That's my good buddy Jerome's listing. So um, that 4,700 square foot uh, house kind of out on Florida, Florida Road, correct? Yep. Yeah, definitely. Man, that's a sweet home. I'm telling you, it has a. I think when we had toured it, what the survey told us is that it was a really nice family from Texas. I was in there. Uh, they were actually homeschooling all their kids. So the whole downstairs is this huge, huge basement where they would, uh, you know, teach the kids and stuff like that. So got it. What can I answer for you? Oh uh, well, how much is it? Well, the asking price is seven ninety nine. Okay. Uh, seven hundred ninety nine thousand. Okay. But it's been on the market for going on one hundred and ninety days. Okay. Okay. It might be a little motivated. Okay. And uh, what in how many square feet did you say in the proper in the house? Forty seven hundred square feet. Okay. And that does not include the huge G car garage next door. Okay. And how many acres? Seventeen. Okay. And it's irrigated, so it's, that's good. Good property for out there. And and, and if I wanted to see it, could you show it to me? Yeah, I'll show it to you. Let me talk to my wife, and if we uh, want to take a look at it, uh, I'll give you a call in a little while. Is that okay with you? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So, is, is there anything else I may find out for you as far as taxes or HOA or anything? Well, if you've got taxes in front of you, I, I think i got a kind of a handle on what's going on on taxes in your area. But uh, why, don't you, why don't you, do you have the taxes right there? I, I can get them here in the next three minutes. Here, let, me, let me see if I can pull it up. So you guys, I'll, 
you know, property today, just driving around, enjoying yeah. the weather, or have you guys been looking for, for some time? Yeah, we've been looking for a little while. Awesome. That's a great number. I'll chat with my wife and uh, we'll get back to you if we want to look at it shortly. Awesome. Can I get a, just a first name real quick? Yeah, my name's Harold. Harold? Yeah. All right, Harold. Sounds good. Well, okay. I uh, look forward to talking to you then. Hey, hey, thanks, man. Be good. All right, thanks so much. Bye-bye. What do you think? A lot of dead time. A lot of dead time. Do you get the feeling that maybe he didn't know he couldn't do more than one thing at once? I get that way. Like, I just, it's hard to think of what to say to somebody if you're trying to get something done. What else? He didn't build a connection with him at all. all. It was very transactional. Like, yeah, he didn't give you this. He didn't even give him his name at the end. Like, hey, can we set up a time to meet? Oh. Like, personal level he had such a huge opportunity had that. a huge opportunity anything else you notice a little all the information about the house but didn't ask a single question about what he was actually looking for mm -hmm. what about you emmy just seemed a little too casual a little too like jovial too casual yeah too casual so he's just kind of like oh yeah it was sweet it was awesome i've been there it's my buddy jerome and so obviously that gets away where it is but um and it's it, like yeah we went there on tour and it was really cool there was this texas family you're like i you could tell that even though it was a trainer he didn't care so that just isn't the way to build a relationship like maybe i want to go get a beer with this guy but i don't want him to sell me a house um well, and then so also, much information he was giving like so much extra information i like, know and it's like let me just info dump yeah. some more is there anything yeah. else i can info dump let me take more time to info dump and then yeah. you got the first name but like he's not going to be on floor in an hour and somebody else is going to get him if he did call back so he didn't ask for a name it's just oh i just felt so bad and then the fact he was on hold so some of the offices around here they'll have the, and it could be the same with uh distinctive some of the other uh distinctive offices i'm not sure how they're set up but you want to be sitting right there on floor and if you are dealing with a person on floor who is in the office, physically in the office, and the phone rings, you lose that call. That phone call is going to go from my, from Corey down to somebody else who's sitting down here. So he'd be like, hey, anybody that can take this floor call or he gets me or somebody else because that person needs to get someone immediately. They can't be sitting on hold. Or if he was to write down the name and number, and then he takes a run around the office to see who's here, that's acceptable as long as they get a call back within about 45 seconds. But that poor guy was like sitting on hold. I think he said it was a, an, a minute and 20 seconds or something before anyone even picked up. So if you were on the side of the road, he would have hung up. You would have said, forget it. I'm just going to write it down and come back. Okay. So I got another one. You ready? This person is no longer working with Cobalt Banker, but, uh, but and, and, and we don't go around listening to your calls. So Sean McLean used to work here and we used to pay a lot of money for Zillow leads for the office, right? And we were doing these um, areas that it was kind of cheap to do it. Like, so we do Hesperus or, which has some beautiful homes, Shenandoah, Trapper's Crossing, but we would do them on random areas so that we could get more leads to the office. But they give you the recording of the phone call and I would always throw these away, but Sean would sit there and listen to them and then send them to me and say, oh, you should talk to this agent because they did a terrible job on floor. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not gonna do that. But then I started using them for training. So I actually have them just for training. I don't believe me, I'm not recording your calls. Okay, so I have to share it so that the, the sound goes. Here we go. I mean, share the screen. Oh no, how do I get it? Hold on, maybe I wasn't prepared this. Maybe it doesn't, oh, since we got rid of the account, I wonder if it doesn't work anymore. Oh, let's see if I can get this one to play, hold on. 
I had two of them here, but maybe once you get, oh, they're both gone. Okay, well, I have other ones. Hold on, let's see if this one works. Nope, they're all gone. Okay, I guess um, I can't do the recordings unless I can do this real quick and find here. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can find the, the floor call. Okay, I can't. We, but we do have, here's the other thing that, that both of these callers did. There was one that uh, you'll have to go back and listen to my other recording of the floor, floor thing. That was back when we, had the, when we had the calls. So what happened is the guy was annoyed that he got a floor call. You could tell in his voice. So he gets the floor call and he's like, hello, couple banker. And they're asking questions. And this poor person was a real buyer. Like they actually wanted to know about this home. He's like, I just want to know how many bedrooms are in the, well, it's, it's four bedrooms and three baths. And like, it's, it's just like, I can't be bothered. He goes, are you working with another realtor? And the people are like, no, I just, I'm, I'm pre-approved. I just want to go see. A, oh, well, I'd love to show you that home. And it was so rude. Like, they flip-flopped because they just thought they were being annoyed by it. And they were probably doing three other things at once. And then the other person, um, it was, I really wanted to work with somebody who's already seen this home. And we are in a, it, we are getting into a market where we are going to go see our properties. And it's so important when you're on floor to actually drive around and see all the properties that are being listed by Cobalt Banker um, that aren't going to go under contract tomorrow, even if they are just so that you're aware, because it makes, you don't even have to remember anything about the homes you're going to see. If you just took a quick look and you got a feel for the home, you're not going to remember where the bedroom is or what, what the kitchen looked like. Was it an open floor plan? Just get a feel for the home. When somebody calls and they say, hey, I, I want to know more about this property. And you go, oh, I remember that home. We went there on floor. Uh, could you tell me how the master bedroom sits? Is, wait, wait, I'm wondering about this bathroom over here. If it And right, they're trying to eliminate the property, right? You don't have to remember that for them. You just have to say, you know, I don't remember that, but let me, let me find out for you. So you can still not remember anything, but you have made a connection with a person because you have knowledge of something that we are selling, not let me look it up for you. And that's really what that Wells Group guy was trying, was trying to do. So um, instead, what this person had called on was, I'm looking for someone that knows this house because I have questions about the irrigation and I, I need to know if it's going to be enough for my horses. Like valid, right? And this person that they called has horses, like she knows horses, but she got a little bit snotty because she felt con aff affronted by this person who wants to work only with a listing agent or somebody that knows the house. And instead of saying, you know, that is a great question. Let me go find out. I'm going to go run out there because this is a real buyer and she really wants to go see it. And so why not just say, hey, I'll meet you out there at two. I'll find that out before two o'clock. Give me your name and number. Then you can always call back and say, you know, I don't think this house is going to work for you. But in the meantime, I found three others. Why don't we meet? Right. So that's like going out and helping somebody instead of just saying, well, not everybody who's on floor knows every house. Like that's how they responded. You don't have to work with a listing agent. Do you know that in Colorado? Like you don't have to just, they are your customer. If, if you went into uh, Burger King and every time that you're trying to order something, the person was offended by the things you say, they just have to smile and say, hi, can I take your order? You know, it's just be friendly. That's what we're, our business is. And you know, you make enough money to just, when you make a connection with somebody that it's worth a little bit of uncomfortableness when you're first meeting someone. So those are the things I wanted to impart. And I, I will find those. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send them to you once I get the download because they are hilarious to listen to. Um, don't talk too fast. So listen to me. I'm talking too fast. But when I'm talking to customers, you have to slow down, pace yourself with them. If they talk a little faster, it's okay to talk a little faster. Uh, but be careful of that. Silence instead of conversation. Don't take 30 seconds to warm up to somebody, they can take 30 seconds to warm up to you. You should be smiling and ready to go. Uh, yeah, don't be argumentative. It's too late to backtrack. Once you realize you said something and you weren't polite enough, you can't really backtrack and get it back. You have to just be ready and don't cut someone off. Do you ever have those conversations with people? I know there's one person in this office that I sometimes find that we both are talking and we cut each other off. It's the way she talks. Be really careful if that happens to be your personality to not do that to a customer. Customers will do that often. And when they start talking, 
Um, that's just their personality or the way they communicate. You need to stop talking when that person is starting to talk and just stop and then listen. And then, okay, then you go back because some everybody's got different ways of, of communicating and just be real careful of that. Shoot, I wish I had those two to, to relay. But instead, what I want to talk about now is if somebody walks in, here's just a few things to remember. Uh, it's It's always good. The way Ninja teaches you is... If somebody is coming in off of the street, generally they come to your reception area. The way Cobalt Banker was designed in Durango was so that reception isn't staring at the door. Because you know in some offices, Keller Williams, Wells Group, you're, you walk into their office and they're staring at you and it keeps people from coming in because they feel like I'm going to be, uh, it's a car salesman type thing, right? So we've done this, and it's always a good idea if you're in a different office to just be not staring at people. But when they come in, you want to immediately make eye contact and you get up from your seat and you walk towards them and you say, hi, my name's Heather. I, uh, how can I help you today? So you at least get out from behind your desk. And if nothing else, you stand up to approach them. I've seen many, many people sit and they even go so far as to have the people sit with them by their little laptop. What I always wanted to do is we happen to have the floor computers. I wanted one of them loaded and ready to go. I knew it was on. I didn't have to load anything except for Paragon. And that way, if I had a floor person walk in, I had a place to take them, right? So you go up, you introduce yourself, you shake hands, you talk to them. And if they say, I'm just looking, it's like, oh, great. Well, as they're looking, this happened all the time when I was at Purgatory Resort area, is they just want to look at the maps. They want to look at the pretty pictures. They're waiting for their wife in the bathroom. So they're just in there and you're just communicating. Are, are, is this your first time to Durango? Do you come here often? You're just communicating. Are you, at, are you looking for a home? Uh, we have some great inventory here this year. How's the snow today? Uh, have you been out to the river yet? You're just making conversation and then you're starting to draw them in. So. Um, what some people say is that when you come up into the lobby and you go to shake their hand to always offer them, could I get you a glass of water? So you're offering something. Some people, it's knickknacks. They have pens. They have something of their own that they can hand to someone. Water is fine enough. Just a coffee. Just may I get you something? It is a way for them to settle in and know that um, know that you're actually there to serve them. Another tip, I'm terrible at names. Some people are good at names. I always had a clipboard and when they, I got nervous when they would talk to me and I'd forget the name right away because I'm worried about making the connection. I would just write the name down right away on the clipboard so that I wouldn't forget just the first name. That was a, that was a trick. Uh, I think those are, those are the main trick tricks up on floor. Don't have big gulps. We have rules in Durango about you don't want big, ugly containers and paperwork and all those kind of things. You don't eat on floor, just run into the side room if you need to grab a bite to eat. Um, just always look like everything's presentable. I used to work on my farming because farming was something that wasn't distracting to me to just put like to fold things and put stamps on them or whatever I needed to do. But you wanna set it aside from the table so it looks really presentable. Uh, not like my office down in the basement. You want it to look presentable so that if anybody comes in, it, all you have to do is to do that. Uh, is to stop what you're doing and, and talk to them. You also don't ever want to use floor time to catch up on phone calls. I just have to return this one call. Do not do it. If you have to, if you're doing a contract thing and you absolutely have to call someone during floor shift, the first thing out of your mouth is, hey, I happen to be on floor. If somebody, if the phone rings or somebody comes in, I'm going to hang up right away and I'll call you back in a few. Uh, because you don't ever want to be stuck and somebody standing there and you're like, just don't do it. Uh, also, other tips, if I know you that you're going out of town, tr I used to not schedule people the day before, at least the night before they're going out of town, because that's kind of useless. You're about to go on vacation, you meet someone, and then you got to find somebody to take care of them if they happen to be in town. So those kind of tricks, if you see that you're on floor before you go on a vacation, just see if you can get it covered, because you really want to have that mindset of not the hundred other things that you need to do, uh, but of actually like being able to work with a customer. I have, oh yeah, and uh, writing contracts. I guess if you have to just write one, but you don't want to be going over it with somebody. So there's 
two reasons for the four people that I usually got. I didn't, I was never really good with somebody that is there that wants to buy something immediately. I guess I got better at it up at the resort because that's all you deal with are people that are like, I love purgatory and I want to buy something today. Okay, I will sell something. But I was better with the long-term people because there was a plan. I'm kind of, I'm the tortoise. I just want to help them and I can kind of connect with them and their trip is going to be in six weeks. Those are more the people that you meet on floor. It's not people that are like, they might be standing on the side of the road, but they're usually not going to buy something today. You're trying to build a relationship for later. So that's kind of a bummer. I know Heather, you're like one of your first floor shifts. She gets that $900,000 listing, but it's not usually that way that it's people that you just have to keep working in it. And after a year or two, you will start making sales from the things that you, the people that you met on floor. And it was a good part of my business when I was, when I had done it consistently over the years. Uh, but you just have to be patient with it. And then every once in a while, you get a bone and you get, you get a seller that comes in off it. So that's about it. Can you, I have a checklist. It's not even a checklist. It's, I put the ninja script into a one page. And I, if I don't happen to have the, if I don't happen to have the word doc, you would just have to redo it. Uh, but it has some questions on it. So if that's helpful to you, I'm happy to send it out. Okay, so I can send it to everybody who's on today. Uh, do you guys have any questions you can think of? Pretty straightforward. I'll have to, I'll have to find, I'll have the, uh, the, the phone calls queued up for you all next time. So you can hear the, you can hear the Zillow calls that we got because one of them's pretty bad. It's, it's so bad that it, it makes you cringe. <laughs> It's only about 45 seconds because that's all they lasted. Um, but thank you for coming today. I don't know.